and welcome to the stream. Uh, so today I have some um, cartoon vectors that I'm going to work on. And uh, I figured I'd go ahead and stream that process here in Affinity Designer. So right now in uh, Affinity Designer, I am in the uh, Pixel Persona. I've got my brush tool selected. I'm going to start sketching out my ideas for the cartoons here. Uh, now for the brush that I'm using, I'm using the Natural Pencil 4B. Uh, this is a collection of brushes here that I've 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 created on my own my own little um, list of brushes here. So I'm using the Natural Pencil 4B. You can find that under pencils. So I've got that selected. And I'm going to just start sketching some ideas, start using some different shapes, sketching some different ideas, and see what I might be able to come up with. So you can always look up some reference, either look up zebras or if you want to look up other cartoon zebras and see how other people have kind of created what you might be trying to do. So at this point I just want to go ahead and start throwing in some shapes here, uh, seeing which ones I might like, what I might not like. Be pretty loose and whatnot here. Um, if you want to change sections, you could always select the lasso tool here, uh, the freehand selection tool L. We could just go ahead and make our selection and then we could select our move tool and move that around or change the size of it a bit. So here I just kind of want to bump it up a little bit, make it a little bit shorter, a little more level here. This is just a base sketch. I could go ahead and continue um, here in a little bit. I'm going to control D to back out of that. And this is a part of the process, you really want to try to just relax and enjoy it. Uh, you're, each design might be a little different, each um, cartoon or illustration you might, you might want to do might be a little different, some might come a little bit easier and faster, others might take a little bit more time to develop. But this is just the sketching stage, so you want to stay nice, relaxed, and loose with it. We can uh, start messing around with maybe where, how we want his tip. We want it just there like that. Do we want it to? Mess around a little bit. Him. 
With the eraser selected, I'm actually going to come in uh, to my brushes here and select the uh, Comics G Pen for the brush itself. I mean, I'm sorry, for the eraser. That way I can get a little bit more. If I press lightly, I'll get more of a thin tapered line. So I could come in here and erase out that little section of the tail. Or if I press harder, I could get a wider, wider eraser. I'm not sure I like that a whole lot, so we'll go ahead and get rid of this. So I'll probably just kind of stick with it. Coming down here. kind of looking to behind him right now over his shoulder a little bit um just gonna try switching this up just a little bit just to see what it looks like if we these eyes again. It's always like his nice big wide eyes when I'm doing this kind of cartooning. Okay, so maybe more like that. Kind of adds a little more interest. It's like he's kind of looking up and off away from... Um, kind of up and off into the distance kind of creates a little uh, wonder kind of like oh I wonder what he's looking at what's what's out there so a big thing for me in any of the art that I do whether it's just a simple cartoon like this like these will be used as spot illustrations uh, so just a little standalone illustration at the bottom of the page, it's going to be used for a children's math workbook. But even when creating a cartoon, even just for something like that, I still like to add a little bit of uh, story to it. So kind of having his eyes look off there and kind of give us a sense of, oh, what's he, what's he looking at? What's, what's over there? Um, I like adding that little bit of story or character. Um, even if it is just going to be a little standalone illustration, I think that always adds a little bit more to it. Um, and I think people pick up on that. So that's one way to, to, like, we have this kind of stumpy foot here, and if I was just to go ahead and do that, and then I'll, I'd color that in, and that would be technically its hoof. That, that's a simpler version than even adding just this simple hoof shape here. So if you want a simpler cartoon, um, you could go with something like we have back here on the hind legs, but if you want to add a little bit more um, to the cartoon, creating a, its own separate hoof shape will help us kind of accomplish that. So we'll go ahead and do that for his hind legs here as well.
And now, working with this cartoon here, we've got his foreleg and then his hind leg here. And they're going to be standing about the same. Going to be about the same line. All right, so we want to go ahead and bring this down just a bit. And the same will go for the back as well. I'm going to be standing on the same line. And in order to give us a little bit of perspective, the foreground leg that's on the back side of him will be a little bit higher than our foreground leg. Same for the back. And that'll help create a little bit of uh, perspective in the image. So I'm working on something like this. I tend to just use the one lane and continue to draw and erase and clean up the drawing as I go. Another option that you have, if you don't want to just continue to noodle around on the same layer here, if you do come over here, you can, you can create a new layer. And then this layer down here, we can come up to the opacity and we can lower that opacity down. So whatever, you know, whatever's enough for you to kind of see and get a good look at it. And then we can come onto that top layer and then we can start putting our more uh, final lines. To get a cleaner final line drawing. So it's up to you which way you want to work. It's totally preference. Um, it's something that you can just play around with. Like I said, I usually tend to stick on just the one layer and noodle around with it, but here we'll just go ahead and create this new layer and get a more clean final line art here. And then even when you're designing things, even as simple like the nostrils here, you know, we could just do a little oval. Would work okay. Or we can add a little bit of extra shape. Just to give them a little more visual interest. Because even when you're drawing a cartoon like this, even if it might be simple or more straightforward, you do want to add the little hints to the perspective, his hooves, the more interesting shapes for his nostrils, all will make it pop and stand out just a little bit more. And as I'm drawing this, I'm starting to think in my head how I'm going to approach the vectors, how I'm going to layer the vector shapes in order to make this work.
We haven't even gotten to the fun part of his stripes yet. So, first drive should kind of start right here. And create just a little bit of variety. Stripes are very cool. In this section like this, we want to make sure that while we're doing the stripes here, we don't want this stripe line to run into the line of his body. That would create a tangent. So one line that flows into another line of a different object, which will then kind of make it uh, seem like one line. And it's just something that we tend to pick up on and kind of pulls us out of uh, the drawing or the image that we might be looking at. So always try to pay attention again over here on this side. You know, we want to make sure that the lines are not hitting each other directly there. It's always worth to try different things just to see what else you can come up with. We also come up onto that tuft of hair on the back of their neck. some on their face as well.
do like to give myself some more leeway when I go to actually do the vector itself to be able to change any shapes that I might want to. This is general idea here for our little zebra. create another pixel layer. sketch here. We're going to do a sloth. So, let's we'll see here. Yeah, we're just going to kind of stick with some simple shapes. decide how much of the branch we want.
I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to load the opacity on this one. There's some stuff I like about this one, but I want to kind of clean it up and uh, be a little more direct with a few things. So sloths have this very interesting face. So whenever I'm looking at something, I try to break down the simplest shapes first. So this would be their face shape. And then we kind of got this like little muzzle, nose. Nice round eyes. And then we can kind of put his head shape. Maybe we'll bring this tree branch down just a bit. And then these claws would kind of essentially be hanging onto the top now. Maybe that story, maybe... Maybe we'll have him kind of looking up and towards a... Some of these little leaves here. as lunch. Try one more thing real quick. I'm going to just see. I just take it like 
this. Alright, we'll leave that there. I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, lower the opacity on this layer. About 25%, and I'll create a new pixel layer. Now we're gonna kind of just go ahead and redo that a little bit. I just wanted to change the angle of that branch a bit. Actually, let's go ahead and um, and again, this is the stage you don't want to, you know, don't be afraid to just completely scrap something and start over or try something completely different. You know, we want to generate our ideas here. So actually, on that note, let's go ahead and just we'll get rid of that bottom layer and let's try something just completely different. So I'm going to switch them up a little bit. just sleeping.
So we can always do something like that too, just kind of have him sleep in there on the tree limb. something like that and then again just to add a little bit to it Get some leaves there sleepy little sloth, so I think something like that could work as well. What I'll probably end up doing is, since I know I like what, uh, what we have for the zebra, I'll probably hop over to do the zebra, uh, and it'll give myself a chance to kind of think on uh, a sloth a little bit more. Let's go ahead and give this one another shot quick though. There's still this one. So this one is definitely an option as well. choice now between our sleeping sloth or our hanging sloth. guy sleeping on the tree limb for that matter, but like I said, we're going to get there. We'll go ahead and take a look at our zebra here.
Okay, and in just a moment here, we'll go ahead and we'll start vectoring the zebra. Alrighty. Alright, so let's start vectoring our zebra here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to the designer persona. We're gonna start off with a rounded rectangle to see if we can't get a Something more like that. We're coming to the stroke. I've got to reset my stroke pressure here. into the rounded rectangle. I don't want to change this to a six and 
then I want to go ahead and I'll open this up. I'll select the ellipse and I want to make that four. So I want my outside lines to be thicker than any inside lines. I want them to be able to stand apart from each other. For a cartoon like this, I want a pretty bold outline. So I'll grab my pen tool. Click to terminate that in there. Once again, we'll do that, and then I'll close that shape off. Go ahead and create another triangle. For this fill color, I want this to be a nice, subtle red, very desaturated. I'm going to drag that curve into our other curve there. For this curve shape here, come over to the blue, the teal. I'm going to make that very nice light, almost white, just a hint of blue closer to white maybe but uh, for this I'm gonna hold alt and I'll go drag it and that will duplicate it I'm also gonna come and flip horizontal I'm gonna line it up back here with the other ear without holding shift because I want more of a an organic resizing there if I was to hold shift it would size proportionally uh, and here I just want to kind of be able to squish it a little bit if I want to. And then now in the layers panel, I'll hold shift and I'll just drag both of these below our main head shape layer here. And for now, I'll turn them off until we get our other lines and shapes in here. So let's go ahead and work on the eyes. gray for the white of the eye. Stroke there, we're still at a four, so we'll keep that. Now with the move tool selected, I'll hold alt. Kind of resize this. For this fill here, I'll probably come in and get nice green. Something a little bright though. I'm going to drag this ellipse into our other ellipse there. And again, I'll do the same thing. I'll hold Alt and drag. And then this, I'll go ahead and kill that fill, and I'll just switch that outside stroke. Scale it down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull that into the ellipse there itself as well. Now we'll add some highlights. I'll grab the ellipse tool again and hold shift for a nice flat circle there. I want that to be white. Now this shape, I do want to come up, put it all the way at the top. I'll hold alt. Oh, I'll select my move tool and hold alt to duplicate that. I'm going to make this more of uh, an ellipse. When I'm creating these lines, I want an overlap. I want it to overlap the outside line of the pupil and then the color as well. And I'll do the same for this one. So that whole eye shape, I can now select the whole eye shape, hold Alt and drag. Now he's looking in the same direction. Uh, we could downsize this if I hold shift just a hair because it has slightly turned. Well, let's select our pen tool and I'm going to create some eyebrows for him. The 
escape to end that line. I think we're gonna make these black. Uh, I'll come over to stroke. I'll come down to here to our pressure panel. I'll put one point in the middle by clicking on it. I can go over to either side, click and drag down, and it'll taper both of those edges. Hold Alt to duplicate. I'll flip horizontal and I'll come and drag this one to place over here. Slightly rotating it, pick it up a bit there. I'll create his little nostril shapes here. Select my move tool again. I do want to reset the pressure on these in here though. Look for our inside fill color. We'll select what we had for the ears. And I'll hold Alt. Flip horizontal on that as well. I'll just try to turn it just a bit. figure out the stripes. Go to the stroke panel, make that a little bit larger. I'll set pressure again. Hold all to duplicate it. Mirror it. something like that, and I can always select the A tool, and move those nodes around just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and do this for now, I'm not sure I'm really liking that a whole lot. do something like that for now. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape to end that. I'm going to work on these little ones. I'll reset the pressure. Come over to color. I want that to just be a fill. I'll grab my move tool. I'll hold alt to duplicate that. I'll bring this one down here. Without holding shift, you can change the size of that just a bit. Now I'll hold shift, I'll select the other side as well, hold alt to duplicate, I'll flip those horizontal. Alright, so we're kind of getting something there. Coming into this shape here, for the fill color, I want this to be a fairly dark gray. Select our nostrils, I'll drag them into that ellipse shape there. Turn the ears back on. stripes and the eyebrows, drag them up into the head shape, and then we'll come and get our eyes as well. So something kind of like that. Select like this eye, I'm bring this one over just a bit. Move that hair, eye, the hair as well. But we've got his face. I 
you have any questions, so please let me know in the comments. All right, so we'll select the pen tool. Let me just start tracing. Side of his body here. side of the head shape first. Okay, the pen tool, go ahead and create his little tuft of hair on his tail. Go ahead and end that to make it a sharper point. Okay, I'll do the same there. I'll select that nice dark gray. Actually, for the fill or the stroke there, we want that just to be black. And that'll be the same thing we're going to do for the hoofs. will place behind and under. Select our A tool here. I want to move these nodes for his feet. All right, let's go ahead and Create some of these stripes that way we can lay in the color for his body and start putting the image together a bit more. So I'm just going to come in and trace out these lines. I'm going to drag that into the body curve.
So you can see I'm changing up a little bit from these the actual um, pencil lines that I had there. Uh, like I said, I like to give myself that leeway. Not everything's got to be exactly as I drew it in the pencils. Um, I like to change things a little bit. I'm still keeping in mind um, the stripes that will be on his tuft of hair that's on the back of his neck and back um, as to avoid any tangents while creating these, these stripes. tail to do here in a second as well. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the chat. One of the things I do really enjoy about Affinity Designer is how easy it is to go ahead and um, create a sketch or a drawing and then um, be able to easily switch into the vector persona in order to vector it. And notice this here, I'm going to come down here and just fix that a bit. It's looking pretty cool so far, so I think what we can go ahead and do is we'll add the color to his body. Actually, first, let me go ahead and cancel that out real quick. Let me go ahead and create this foreground leg. Again, go to a pressure. I'll set a middle point there. I'll click on either end of these to taper that. And then for the fill, I can set that to blue, which when you don't close off the shape, it will close the fill color off between the two points. But that'll be fine because as we add the body color here, it'll blend right in. Yeah, I don't want this line to end below that body line. I 
I'll do the same on this side. into the stroke and take that pressure off. Alright, we'll work on this back leg here. The A tool, go ahead and just adjust that shape just a bit. P for pen tool. All right, now in the um, layers panel, I'll select those three stripe shapes and throw them into that background leg. shapes come in here this one's a little off so the no tool go ahead and pull these nodes in just a bit and he's looking cute I like his little hoofs all right so let's go ahead and tackle this back leg here shapes into the background leg. getting there.
close off the shape. I will go ahead and add the stripes first. Just like the move tool, I'll move this just a bit. Alright, so in the layers panel, we'll go ahead and that top curve selected will hold shift, we'll select all those and bring them into that main, I suppose. And that's our little zebra. Turn off that pixel layer. And there's our zebra. So we go ahead and select all of the zebra in the layers panel here, holding shift. I'll right click and I want to group these together. I'm going to name the zebra. Help if I spelled it correctly. So let's go back to our sloths, and now we have a decision to make. Which one of our little sloth friends here are we going to go ahead and actually vector? I'm actually kind of fond of the one sleeping. So maybe we'll go ahead and go with this guy, I think. Probably go with uh, we use the ellipse tool. Just an outline for now, just the stroke. Now with this ellipse tool shape selected um, and created here, we can come up to convert to curves. This will allow us to manipulate in each individual node a little bit more. 
pull the ones off to the side and I can grab the node handles. That'll make for a slightly sharper tip to each side of his little face. And the bottom one here. Taper that just a little bit more. And the move tool, I'm gonna go ahead and change up that orientation a little bit. We'll go back to A. Select my pen tool here. I can create this little tuft of hair at the top of his head. So there's two ways of, of combining both of these shapes. If I select this shape here and I'll hold shift and select our um, head shape. You can come up here to our boolean options and select add and you can see how it's now made that all in one shape i'll control z that now with both of these shapes selected i can also come down to our shape builder tool and i have the drag method selected to freehand so that means as i drag through the shape now you see the lines within the shape that means those shapes have been selected I'd be able to come up here to the Shape Builder toolbar under Action and click the uh, plus button, making it into one shape as well. I'd then have to come ahead and pull my stroke back uh, to six. So two different ways of combining shapes. Uh, both work just as well in a situation like this. With the ellipse tool, I'll go ahead and Create another ellipse for his little mouth area here. We'll turn that, and again, deviating from the sketch just a little bit, now that we have these shapes, um, actually making the shapes here. Turn that down to four. I'm gonna hold Alt, Control, Shift. So I wanna keep the proportions in line for his nose. Just in there. Go ahead and do that for now. The pen tool, I'll go ahead and create his little slight smile so we can hit escape to end that line. Move to look at that just a bit. I'm going to come into our stroke panel. And again, I'm going to play with the pressure here. I'm going to add a point to that line. Select either side drag down that all taper each end of that stroke the ellipse tool selected again hold shift go up here we'll get rid of the stroke for the fill we'll make it white and with the move tool selected I'll hold alt to duplicate that now I'm just going to kind of squish that shape up a little bit just a little bit of uh, wetness to his nose there. So Coming here to create his little eyelids. Again, I'll hit escape to end that. And escape to end that. So we shifted his muzzle over just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and create using the pen tool here. These outside markings around his eye. I'm gonna come back in here to reset the stroke pressure. Although we won't be Using a stroke on that, I'm going to create a
I drag those down to the nose shape. I'll select the nose shape and the smile and drag that into the front muzzle. Just drag this all the way around. Looks like both of the shapes drag them into the head shape. around with this, um, this shape here a bit. So I'm going to select that or no tool. Kind of just adjusting everything as we go along here. Back to our pressure panel, our strokes menu here. Let's see what he looks like with some eyebrows. We'll flip that horizontal.
something maybe a little bit more like that. See how we're gonna maybe do his body here. Because we have these shapes kind of overlapping and such. Select our pen tool. Start up here. Blowing up my line and got me missing calls. Told her you ain't gotta hit me till you lick it. Feel like ZBF, baby. I'll be cooler than the mink weather. Make a coke bottle, give me brain till I think better. Back up on my again, hanging out with Benjamin. Franklin got me stacking in the lake and talking dividends. Look at what we did again. Here is whole control to adjust the node. the um, stroke reset the pressure as well now I want only one end of this one to taper so I'll go ahead and create that center point again I'll click on one end and then hold alt drag to taper that and then the pen tool for this side here So this main shape here, we'll go ahead and oops, no, that, that. We're gonna drag this below our head shape. Okay, looking good so far. some maybe a little bit of fur change that stroke little okay, hit escape to go ahead and close that out we'll work on his little feeties clicking on each point 
to close it so it creates more of a um, sharper point there. Again, we want that to be black. We want the fill to be maybe this. Wider. Yeah, something like that. out here Just duplicate this one, hold Alt, bring that one over here, kind of line that up a little bit. So that's all going to sit below the body. We've got his main head shape here. I'm going to hold Control and Shift. Just going to make that a whole shape. Yeah, that actually looks pretty decent that way. Um, I just noticed that his nose and mouth aren't in there, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and put them in there now. I think they actually look a little bit better smaller, so that works. We've got our sleeping sloth here, so I'm going to go ahead now. Do some work. On our tree back here. Tree branch. Uh, we'll make that probably five. I'm going to be just a little less than that. We're going to take off the stroke pressure. Come over here to color. I'm going to select the same color that we have for him. That way, as I change it, there we go. Something a little bit darker. There we go. We'll come back up to our stroke panel. Escaped and I keep forgetting. Escaped and there. Alright, so 
so I'm going to go ahead and drag, select all those holding shift, drag and put those into the tree branch shape itself. I'm gonna select both of those. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna come up to layer, expand stroke. That will take each of these from being a stroke to um, now it's got a fill on it um, instead. So we'll make that a tree shape, and then we'll add a stroke to it on the outside. And then I'll come up here and click Add to create make that one shape again I want to reset that stroke keep that outline black I'll select the green that we had earlier it's just a little bit darker to end that, we'll go back to the stroke, we'll surround the pressure again, all right, uh, we'll drag that down into the leaf shape, and with our move tool I'll select the entire leaf, I'll hold alt, and now I'll just go ahead and resize them. Go ahead and turn the pixel layer off on this one as well. There you have it on this one as well. Our sleeping sloth. So you want to go ahead, I do want to make sure that my strokes are the same. That one looks a little bit thicker, so I'm going to make that six. That one will keep the five. Again, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select all of our sloth shapes. I'll group those. I'll name that layer sloth. Do so you want to go ahead and I'll get rid of this shape here since we're not using it. I can take this curve and drag it down into the body curve itself. Same with those little furs. shift I'll select both these shapes and drag them into that front little paw I like to keep my files as organized as possible um, that way if I ever have to come back and edit them I everything will be in one spot I can quickly go ahead and, and edit those things plus keeping them all separated um, like this goes a long way when you try to do any sort of vector animation, um, you would then have each shape that's separate that you would be able to move as you need it. So that's a, that's the full process on um, on some you know just cartoon vectors, some pretty simple, pretty straightforward uh, vectors. There's nothing too complicated about them. Um, I'm gonna take a real quick break, re-up on my coffee, and then we'll come back and I'll show you a couple of ways, we'll work with the zebra, I'll show you a couple of ways of being able to add a little extra form 
to the cartoon characters. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the zebra that we have here. So one thing that we can go ahead and do is now we've got, you know, this is a pretty simple cartoon and whatnot, but we'll go ahead and add some, some simple form and shape. So I can add some shadow under his belly, on his back legs, under his mouth, um, and head here. So basically what we can do is what we're thinking about is let's say the light source is coming from the direction that he's looking so our upper right hand so the light's going to be coming in this direction so there'll be a shadow on this side of his face which will cast a shadow on this part of his body and then there'll be a shadow on the back side of him okay so if we were to just go ahead and create Grab the ellipse tool. Okay.
is our light source. I'm trying to swap off for now. Give ourselves some room here. So, light source. Coming from our upper right. Alright, so with the pen tool selected. Start down here. a nice shape like that. Um, we're going to get rid of that stroke and we'll select just the fill. I come in here and get a nice purple, something closer to the gray though. And what I'm going to do is in the layers panel, I'm going to go change our layer panel options from normal to multiply. I'm going to drag this into our body shape. So now we got a little bit of a shadow shape there. I'm also going to go ahead and create one we can have it follow the curve of his body selected for these shapes I'm going to stay within our lines here as they are overlapping different shapes. So if I wanted to, I could pull the shadow shape into the leg that's sitting in the background here and then the hoof. I can go ahead and just keep that separate and on top of both of those shapes. you do things like this, the more you kind of come up with um, your own way of doing them or, or um, things that you prefer and how you layer your work. So this is one way to take a fairly simple or straightforward cartoon and kind of bump it up by adding some simple lighting. Now 
this shape we can go ahead and flip into his body. Go ahead and move the sloth shape below the zebra. drag this into the zebra fold, but we'll just leave it at the very top. Kind of organize ourselves a little bit here. Maybe a nice shadow shape here as well. into that mane of his. down. I'm going to close that body shape. same for his ears. We'll clip this one into his head shape. We'll take a look at his ears quick.
looking pretty decent. So something else that you could do <clears throat> is with these shower shapes, if we come into quick FX and come down to Gaussian Blur, we can add a bit of a blur to them. So say if we even made that blur 12 pixels. You can see how much that it soften, softens those shadows. So, so for instance, while we're in the body here, we're going to go ahead and create a nice little ellipse. We're going to make it white. And go to quick FX, go to Gaussian Blur, and out from the white one, if we were just to really a lot of, I want this to be. want to sit top of the stripes you can always try leave it on normal this adds a little more light to it we can try to lower that just a bit have that more subtle look there. So go ahead and just So you could do something uh, like that and get a slightly different look. So you could go with either the, the harder shadowed cell shaded look or by using the Gaussian Blur option you can blend out those shadows a little bit and this gives you more of a, more of a painted look. So let's see. and blur 12 pixels to some of the rest of the shadow shapes. And typically this is something that I would do as I'm creating these shapes. Now we can come through our layers here and just holding control we can individually select rest of those, selecting Gaussian Blur, again 12 pixels. Another thing that we could take a look at is say this white that we used, let's go to the one on his face. Maybe, maybe it was yellow, okay. So you can add um, different color lighting um, if you wanted a secondary light source somewhere else. Um, you can do that. But let's say we just kept that white. Maybe move to below the other stripes. So 
couple different options. There you go. So that's how you can add some um, some extra form to your cartoon. So let's say go ahead and change these over quick too, real quick. Drag these into the zebra shape. Close up that zebra. guys up. Let's take a look. What we got. So this is our zebra that we did some pretty simple lighting on to get some extra form. Um, and then there's our original our zebra there. So you could really see how much extra uh, dimension even just those simple, that simple lighting, um, adds. All right, and I think that about does it. Um, that's kind of the full process on my cartoon vectors and um, sort of my approach uh, from sketching them out in Pixel Persona to full vectors in Designer, um, and then some additional tips on adding form. Um, I will be creating more tutorials like this and holding more streams. Um, so if you're looking for anything in particular, let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell as I do continue to create new tutorials and stream more. Um, I'd love to have you here as I continue to build up the channel, and I appreciate all of your support so much um, on the YouTube channel. It really means a lot to me, and, and thanks for watching and liking and commenting and, and sticking in there with me. Um, but there's tons of more content to come, and I'd love to hear more from you as well as what you might be um, looking for and other things that might be that you might find helpful. So thanks again, and have an awesome rest of the weekend. Until next time.